Today, MTD CNC are in Hove. We're at Dugard. I'm with Eric Dugard, who's the managing director of the company. Now, recently, if you'll have followed our channels, you'll notice that they have taken on the Kitamura Machine Rage Agency. Um, Eric, this is great news for you, isn't it? What a fantastic product. Yeah, we're very surprised um, at the um, abilities of the machine. I think probably fair to say it's one of the best kept secrets in the machine tool business in recent years. Now you've not had it for that long but you've already sold several machines haven't you? What, what sort of applications have they been uh, sold into? There's a whole cross section, a couple of people are working on automotive, they've got some very high speed features which lend themselves to automotive. Uh, aerospace, uh, one customer working on some aerospace components and generally into subcontract companies. Okay, this is going to be a really interesting and topical interview because we're going to pick out some of the features that you've established and, and found out about the machines that maybe some people wouldn't know about that should be of interest to them. Um, now, Eric, the, the first thing I want to touch on is, is about the range and the, the machines that you believe are really good for this market. Yeah, they, uh, well, it's quite a large range of machines from very small capacity, high speed machines to uh, 1250 pallet horizontal machines with um, very heavy cutting capabilities so you know it's quite diverse. And they also have a five axis offering as well don't they? Yes uh, they have three machines in the five axis range smallest being a 400 pallet uh, machine up to uh, I think it's a meter swing on the biggest machine and that's available in a twin pallet version as well. Now when you're building a machine one of the, one of the, the the key things that I've picked up on from our conversation before this interview is how Kitamura actually build their machines and where they're built and what gives them the longevity. Could you maybe explain to us uh, one of the areas is the, the geometrics and how they how they go to to put the castings together and all the mechanical side? Well they make great moment the fact that the machines are built to um, a true geometry before they even apply the CNC control. Um, I mean obviously people do talk about microns very loosely these days but uh, on all models, including the very big machines, they're claiming two microns positional accuracy across the full stroke of the machine, whereas most people are working to a limited stroke, let's say 300 millimetre, and are often a lot uh, lower accuracy than we're quoting. So these machines are being built like this in Japan. How, I mean, how, how would a lot of other machine tools be built then? Would they not, not in the same way? I don't believe so. I mean, one of the big points that Kitamura make is they're using all Japanese castings. They, you know, they're not sourcing them from a lower cost um, source which a lot of people are uh, they scra hand scrape all the all the mating surfaces of the machine to get the true accuracy so when the controls applied and we've seen it on machines being delivered there are actually no offset um, parameters entered there with, through the laser calibration it laser calibrates out to almost zero um, okay so, so a lot of other machine tool manufacturers will put them to build them together almost to optimum uh, optimum geometrics but then they'd have to laser align them to get the final uh, final set. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean obviously most machines are, these days are built to a very um, uh, high level of accuracy but uh, yeah, as you say in the end they are fine-tuned by using the laser calibration process. So if this is the foundation of the machine how much does that affect its longevity then? Would you say that's integral in the in, in the way the machines tend to last for many many years? Yes I mean we've got customers using them uh, you know they've had them 10-12 years even longer in some cases that are still getting exceptional accuracy from the machines including uh, the reliability side of it as well, which seems to work very well from getting uh, and, and would this help with uh, the machines uh, not growing then, or, or do they still need to apply thermal compensation? Do they need to cool the ball screws? Do they still have those elements as well? Yes, all the features you've mentioned are standard on the machine. You've got cool ball screws on all axes, uh, linear scale feedback on all axes, and actually thermal compensation on all the models as well. Okay, so that's the foundation of the machine. Let's now talk about the, the, the cutting environment and the spindles because I know they've got some quite unique characteristics here as well. And again, earlier we spoke about the, the, the different um, spindles they offer, the BBT40, the BBT50 and the BBT30. Uh, tell me firstly about the BBT40 and you know, how good that actual spindle is. Yeah, we were very surprised on the performance of the spindles we've seen in, with the customers and at the factory. Uh, as standard on a BBT40, you get 20,000 RPM, and it's a four-step gearbox, which is made by Kitamura and been developed by Kitamura, which gives you incredible torque at very low RPM, but also the high speed if you're working on aluminium and that sort of product. This is a great point, and again, I'd be interested for our viewers if they uh, are using sp spindles similar to this or actually looking to achieve high speeds and power at the same time, because that's really what we're saying here, isn't it? Well, it's going to be very useful for people who are working on the more exotic materials, especially in aerospace, maybe the medical industry, titaniums or maybe in canal, that type of 
material. OK, then they step up to the BBT 50, and this is quite impressive as well. You said this is a 12K as... Uh, 12,000 as standard, which again you don't often see on BBT 50, but this has also got a four-step gearbox as well. Yeah, this is a um, very powerful spindle. It's transitioned on the 500, you can choose on the 500 have 40 or 50 taper, but on the 50 taper right through onto the larger models you get 12,000 as standard. Again a four-step gearbox, I think it's about 35 kilowatt spindle power and giving you 580 odd newton meters of torque at very low RPM. So what this really means is at the low RPMs you're still getting a lot of grunt as well. Exactly, yeah. So it gives you the flexibility again of using it on very tough materials or exotic materials. Uh, is this their own spindle, Eric? It is. They make the spindle, they make the gearbox. The whole um, assembly is coming from Kitamura. Okay, then, then the BBT30. Now, I've seen um, some statements claiming that they've been doing 50 mil U drilling operations and, uh, on the BBT30. We talk a lot to BBT30 suppliers these days, yeah. and they're saying sometimes the spindles are as good as BBT40s. We know that's not the case, but are they getting close, and are Kitamura getting close too? I think they're trying to get into that market. I mean, they've been very active for probably 20 or 30 years in the BT30 market. I mean, we didn't see such a big demand for that, but it's surprising how many... Customers prefer to have the agility of BT30, but actually need a bit of power to do some substantial milling on the machine. And with these three spindles then, on all the models that uh, Kitamura do, do you pick which spindle you want on which machine, or are they, uh, you know, can you only have BBT40 on one machine or BBT50 on another? How does that work? Is it modular? It's more de defined by the size of the machine. On the small, uh, they do a 250 pallet machine and a 300 pallet. That's um, available in BT30 or BT40. But on the bigger machines, um, it, you move on to BT40 until you get to the 500, as I mentioned. Then that gives you the choice of both, and then after that, on to BT50. Okay, now I'm going to come back to, now th this really is fascinating to me, because we talked about the, the foundation of the machine and the build of the machine. Uh, a lot of the machines are the box guideway construction. And associated with that normally, we're um, talking about slower, rapid feeds and movements. Um, but that's not the case here with the Kitamura either, is it? How fast do these box guideway machines move? Well, we were very shocked when we looked into the, the models that they offer. Right through up to the 800 machine, they can travel at 60 metres a minute on rapid traverse. But even more surprising, they can also give you a 60 metre per minute feed rate. Now that must come down to the control as well though, how they, how they do that. That must be down to the, the block processing time, the look ahead, because they're not using a, a FANUC control, they've got their own control, is that correct? Well it's their own control but it's based on Mitsubishi hardware, based on the M800, which is the latest control from Mitsubishi. But there's two aspects to the, the speed they achieve. One is using twin ball screw drive, which means instead of using one big ball screw and one big motor, they can run the smaller units at much higher speed but of course still get the same strength and also the other things you mentioned is the very high performance of the control I think they're talking about 2700 block look ahead on the latest version uh, 60 uh, sorry 30 gigabyte um, data server and it's 67 million pulse uh, encoders on the on the machine as standard and again, this is, this is their own control. And for our viewers that may be looking at a machine and might think, well, I'm, I'm, I'm FANUC based here. You know, yeah. it's going to be hard to incorporate a machine with a different control into our environment. Is it difficult? No, it's completely compatible. I would say 99.9% .9 compatible with FANUC. So uh, it's an industry standard control. And we've not seen any problems with customers adopting it. Uh, we've picked up on a, a, a lot of the points here, Eric. One, one of the other things I wanted to mention is the fact that these machines are often are about 20% heavier than some of the competition as well. What does that give a user? I think there's two things. It gives you the, the strength and stability that you're looking for in the machine. Uh, they also have a system where they each machine has an eight-point uh, mounting system. So when you bolt the machine down or put it on the floor, it's got eight points, whereas a lot of our competitors are only running three or four points of contact on the floor so the whole package is really substantial uh, just to, it's very good us talking about this here but one of your one of your customers um, who I'm sure won't mind us mentioning their name Unilade taking all these points into account they've bought uh, continually Kitamura machines when we talk about the growth of the machine and the accuracy and the geometrics can you just um, elaborate for our audience one of the experiences they've had with their machines yeah, I think it's fair to say and they would repeat it that the uh, machines they've got from Kitamura they say we never think about accuracy, we just put the job on there, program it, and it's right. Whereas on other machines from other suppliers, they are often chasing tolerances that they're looking for on you know, a higher accuracy 
components. Uh, one of many installations, in fact, Kitamura claim about 30,000 machines around the world. That's some figure, isn't it? That's true, yeah, but uh, bearing in mind they, that's for over 30 or 40 years of uh, installations, but they've got a huge user base, obviously, in Japan, uh, the States, and more and more in Europe as well. Uh, if engineers watching this would like to see one of these machines and see it in action, you're going to be bring, bringing machines here to Hove, uh, powering them up, running demonstrations, showing off some of these features and benefits? Yeah, very much so. Um, we Actually, if you'd have been here last week, we would have had two machines on the floor, but they were shipped out at the end. In fact, one's being delivered today. Um, but we are getting two machines in in the very near future for stock. And in fact, Mr. Kidamira is going to be here in June to um, come and meet us and meet customers. Good stuff. Well, he might even watch this video, hopefully. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll be able to get back to see him. Uh, interesting insight there into the, into the technical advancements of the Kitamura machine range, which is now available here uh, from Dugard in Hove. Get yourself down here to look at the machines. Thank you very much, Eric. Oh, thank you, Paul. Thanks very much.